Osprey to Hero, Hero to Zero storyline, but we'll kind of zone in a little bit more so for Direwolves here. A team that's had one roster change. Uh, a little bit unfortunate, I would say. We're not going to see the Harambe dance, uh, at least not on the player cams. He has unfortunately been uh, moving on, if you will. Moving on, that's a terrible way of putting it. He's been stuck on a, a coaching analyst role, Dev, but do you think that that's really going to change the dynamic of this team? Hard to say. I mean, if you look at the stats, Harambe was by far the, the lowest stat player on this team. So it's not too much of a surprise to see him move into a more supportive uh, support staff role. But Reaps is a really exciting new Chinese player that we're seeing get a shot here. And I'm really keen for that because I haven't seen a lot of Reaps before. You know, I haven't watched a lot of his journey coming up. And we see a lot of young rising stars, guys 19 years old. Yep. Um, and he's never played at this level before. So I'm really keen to see what he can do with this team that really did peak in stage one, right? Like they went flawless, didn't even drop a single point, 21 point season or stage, I should say, at the start of this year for Apex South. Yep. Went to the Charlotte Major and weren't really able to, to deliver the goods. They didn't make playoffs. Uh, and then stage two, they missed out on the Major. So stage three, this is kind of the redemption story for them. Really keen to see if Reeks can be that difference maker. Well, when I spoke to, uh, I spoke to ED very shortly last night and uh, his, basically, uh, his comments about Reeks were, He's ranked number one, uh, and that's all that he needed to know. I kind of wanted to see if I could poke and probe a little bit and get a bit more of a, um, you know, a backstory to it. Essentially, uh, he's in the fragging role, and it looks like he's going to be feeling quite supported by the rest of the team, which, you know, we've seen this team come together in the past. Uh, Souffle, probably of note for Stage 2, I believe it was. Perf unbelievable performance. So heading into Stage 3, Mandy, do you feel like we're going to see similar results from them? Do you think that maybe there's still a bit to be desired? I think there's actually quite a lot to be desired. You don't just swap out a hard support player for an entry fragger and yep. not expect any changes and any turbulence in the team. There's going to be a lot of role swaps, I imagine, within this team. The dynamic will change, the leadership. I can only imagine that Harambe on a more droning role has a bigger voice in the team and losing that means that they need someone to step into that leadership role. And I think it'll take a few more play days for these guys to get up and running. Yep, well, we'll have to wait and see how long it does take. I, I genuinely think play day three is generally when we start to see uh, teams shine, especially after making some roster changes. Well, the team that Direwolves are going to be versing tonight is one that really has caused a lot of, uh, I, I want to say, confusion uh, on the analyst desk. From stage one to stage two, uh, their changes were impeccable, obviously picking up BG Man and, and formerly Napew, now I-9, uh, and that seemed to do the trick. Not so much in the, the point department. I still feel like there was uh, there was a lot of games that just slipped away from the Mandy. But this roster just looked night and day better from stage one uh, in their previous performances. Yeah, absolutely. I think they just brought on that fragging power in I-9 that they needed to open up some of those rounds. He's been very, very proficient on that entry role. We've seen him pick Ash before Ash was even popular in this current stage. And he's been absolutely smashing it on that entry and just opening up every round he possibly can Phil Fury on those attacks. We often say in APAC South, attacks can be kind of stagnant. They can be a little bit slow, but I think with this extra power on the team, they've really been able to pick off some rounds and even some maps of teams that we didn't expect them to. Well, that's just it, Dev. That's kind of the biggest conversation about Fury is just, you know, what they were able to do, taking down some of the biggest names. You know, you got to remember Remember, they beat Knights, they went overtime with IG, they forced Dire Wolves to the, the fullest extent of the match. It was 7-5, at least in regulation. Do you think that they're going to be able to bring that performance from Stage 2 and replicate it here, uh, knowing what's on the line? You know, major spot on the line, there's only seven teams now, so uh, that competition becomes even tighter than it did before. Yeah, I have some faith in Fury. They are like the upset team, in my view. If anyone, if any team, even like a really, really strong team like Elevate or, or Knights or Game and Gladiators, if any team goes into a Fury match not ready, then they will drop points and Fury will make them look a bit silly. That's this team's kind of MO. They are really unpredictable. They throw things at you. And like you were saying, Mandy, I think bringing in the extra fragging power of a player like I-9 has been great in that respect and just freshening up the team. 
as a whole. So, yeah, I mean, Dial has got to look out. In a way, Dial was probably going in quite favored in this match, with yep. Guz being the only one who picked Fury. <laughs> but there's a real chance that Fury could come out swinging. Well, you do say that Fury throws a couple of curveballs. Let's have a look at the Vito. I'm going to explain something very quickly. Fury have thrown the biggest curveball of all and uh, did not use their ban, their first ban, within the first three minutes of their opportunity. So, Die Wolves got the opportunity to ban out two maps. It's Banking Clubhouse they choose, leaving us all the way down the very end at Skyscraper. Mandy, I don't know whether you want to touch on uh, the bans that we're seeing. Maybe you want to talk about Skyscraper. I'll give you the floor. I think Skyscraper is a very important map for both these teams. Fury played it all the time, especially in the Operation League. It seems like a map that they're very comfortable on, and so I'm surprised that Die Wolves, with the last ban, decide to go to Skyscraper instead of Oregon, to be honest. I would lean into something that they're probably more comfortable on. They've played uh, against Fury previously in APAC South, and they won against them, and so this one strikes as a bit of an asterisk to me. Oh, Dev, would you back that in? Is this a, a big asterisk? Is this a conversation to be had? I know it's hard to say uh, with the, the off-season existing and, you know, teams practicing maps, but you know, back in July, uh, these teams both played on Skyscraper in the Operation League and, yep. and Dial was won at 7-3. That's like, a pretty convincing scoreline. Yep. Uh, you look at APAC South and like you said, Mandy, Dial was again beat Fury. So it does feel like a bit of a head-to-head a -head fixture that we, we know how this story usually goes and it's the way of Dial Wolves. So... Add to the fact that Dial's got two bans because Fury were, were late on their first ban. It doesn't look great. Skyscraper should be Dial's favoured. But that does set an expectation, right? If Fury come out and, and start really racking together a couple of rounds here, it throws a, a big curveball towards Dial's and they'll have to get back on their feet before too long because, you know, six rounds and you've already dropped one point, seven rounds and, and the game's over. Well, Mandy, the, the one point that we had, you know, coming into this was the fact that Dial's obviously playing with a new... Uh, a new teammate, Reaps, and, and the whole mention of roles changing. Do you think that this could at all weaken the armor for Direwolves? Is this Fury's best opportunity to beat this roster? I think that this is personally. I, I think that Plan A1, especially coming into it with a roster that they haven't changed from last stage, that onto a map that they play very, very consistently, like almost week in, week out, they've been playing it. If you look in their match history, I feel like this is Fury's opportunity to bring what they've learned and what they have to a Die Wolves that are still figuring out the ropes and getting it all together. I think this is their best chance to take it. I think it'll be a close game. Well, it sounds like we're all starting to get a little bit weary for Die Wolves. It's time for us to throw it over to the magic duo. It's Jakey and Mikey. <laughs> Not bad from you, Rob. Not bad. Really good pre-show, everyone, of course. For, we've got that professionalism from our Berlin, uh, Berlin attendees. Guys, big game, though, coming up to start stage three. But before we do get there, just want to say com commiserations to the Chiefs who have left us high and dry. <laughs> so you know what? Screw them. Get rid of them. They're gone. We've got the teams that want to be here, uh, and they've got a lot to fight for. Yeah, um, and I think that's a big point to bring up, right? These teams now have one less game to play throughout this stage. That can be both a pro and a con. I think statistically, it's, yeah. uh, it certainly brings more variance into this stage. And Apex South, generally speaking, is very difficult to predict already as it is. I had a quick little look at Skyscraper. We saw it three times in stage two, a map that probably was not played a whole lot when it first came into the map pool, but is now starting to become a little bit familiar uh, and obviously, a familiar map for both of these two teams. They both played it in Stage 2, Dire Wolves a little bit more than Fury. And as was kind of pointed out on the desk, considering they did get that extra ban, uh, this really should be a, a favorite map for them here in this matchup. I'm going to play Devil's Advocate. Obviously, I did not pick Dire Wolves heading into this match. And Skyscraper is a map in which you need to have pretty pinpoint structure. Fury heading into this, I think, have all the ingredients to bring that structure, whereas Dire Wolves presumably have had to make a couple of shifts heading into the stage. So I think it's going to be a test for them to prove that they've got that down pat heading into the final stage of the year. In terms of the ban phase, Thermite off the board first. Now we're expecting Nook to be taken off second here. So far in the regional leagues across the world, a 90% ban rate due to the suppressor buff, due to grenades still being in hand. So I would anticipate that's what Darvis will respond with here. We get confirmation in a moment. And no, Maverick. So, in fact, it will be double hard breach ban here on Skyscraper. Nook will be available, and I think will certainly be a must-pick throughout this match. Well, what do you make of that, though, considering we don't probably see too often double hard breach ban uh, these days, guys. And, and I think on a map like Skyscraper, which can already be quite difficult to even just get into the map, opening up walls, 
obviously such an important dynamic here on Skyscraper. Do you look too much into it, or do you kind of sense that it just should cancel each other out as we, we get the Kai to... It's going to come down to which team's better at lurking and finding map control, right? Daiwa's starting on the attack. They've elected to double down here and go for the double hard breach ban. So I would anticipate them to go for full map takes. Vertical play is going to be really important. Again, enabled by the likes of Nork and other operators that can get control down below. And if they play into that play style, you can negate some of that hard breach. Obviously, it's not going to be very easy. I would anticipate this to be a defender-sided match. But again, we just need to wait and see. Well, as we head into this first game, sort of, a, I guess, a reminder about the importance of these best of ones. There are no playoffs. It's uh, every match counts. We saw that at the back end of stage two with how close it ended up being. Going right down to play day seven, so many different possibilities ended up being uh, really involved towards the back end of the stage. So I know it's only play day one, guys, and I know it's only game one, but all these points matter so significantly, especially considering we've got the seven teams now instead of the eight. So even though we've still got the seven play days for the teams themselves, it's only six. So every match, so important, especially when you're a team like Fury going up against the Dire Wolves. Can you steal a win early? Which then, you know, vice versa for the Dire Wolves, need to be not really dropping uh, a map such as this against Fury, which I know they had a very standout stage two, nine points. Uh, anything was going to be better than stage one, but they looked like that they could even contend for a major spot in stage two. The question being now for Fury, and they go that one step further. Yeah, and the storyline really for Dylos heading into this stage is keeping their SI dream alive. If they finish in the top two, they qualify for the major. That gives them about a 59% chance. They can bolster that, of course, if they do better at the final major of the year. For Fury, that chance is much, much slimmer. In fact, I don't really think it's realistic at this point in time. But nonetheless, they're still fighting for an opportunity to get experience overseas. They can build up to the SI Open qualifiers as well and get in that way. And they are one of the few rosters that have been unchanged right, heading into mm. this stage. So hoping that they can build upon what they established in stage two, where they showed significant improvement. At the start of the year, Fury looked really quite poor, but they turned yes. it around. Yeah, certainly did. Into the first round, though, here. Die Wolves will be on the attack first. And the skyscraper is about that. We have seen a lot of the defenders find success. Very defender slider back in stage two. Obviously, though, the game itself has started to really open up for attackers across the board. But on a map like Skyscraper, still back in the defenders to start while. BG man watching from Shrine. No engagements early on. Drone does go out, but no surprise considering the way Skyscraper's played. BG man lucky to survive there. Reap's going for the peak and was largely successful. 90 seconds now remain. Dark down below. Droned out, though, forced back. Reaps looks to potentially find that pick, but will go unrewarded. The new addition to this roster, in for Harambe, now taking a back seat in a coaching role. So we're tracking him, seeing what he can bring to Dire Wolves, a team that performed amazingly in Stage 1, fell off, though, in Stage 2, and looking to recuperate. I mean, look at the setup here from Fury on the defense, right? Not necessarily on site, but it's almost like the cut, uh, the cat and mouse game, the vigil, the warden. You've got the Valks trying to find some information as well. And the White Collar, well, speaking of that Valkyrie, timing is everything, and Reaps finds that kill. What an introduction here onto the Dire Wolves. 49 seconds left. Advantage for the Dire Wolves now, but Reaps finds the second one. It's a hash, mate. Make that three. What an entry into Apex South. The PG Man and I9 bring it back to a three versus two. I know it's still full health, could have an impact. BG cut off at the back of T, has a Nitro, but low on HP. And with 30 seconds to go, Darwell is seeking these trades. I know repositions, knowing he needs to make a play himself, get aggressive on these positions and try and find a pick to aid his teammate as Darwell is now surround site. Yeah, I remember BG Man low, but he does have that Nitro cell. That could be a difference maker. I9, like you said, very important here. And yeah, BG Man does eventually fall over. I9. Top of hallway stairs, seven seconds left. There's not a lot of time here as ED will get that diffuse it down and Souffle will find the kill anyway. On to I-9. Good start here for the Die Wolves and talk about the dream start, guys, for Reaps. First round, a multi-kill. Doesn't really get much better than that. And that's a good confidence booster in his first big official at this level. Have a good round to kick things off. He's playing a role where he needs to be impactful in the frag department. Yana has shown throughout Global League so far. APAC North, a, a really good example 
um, the most picked operator in the first play day. So he's picking the most on meta attacker arguably at the moment. So he needs to make sure he's having an impact. That's exactly what he did flushing out those positions through that drum push. And he'll be looking to roll that momentum through the rest of this attacking half for Dire Wolves with the double hard breach ban on paper, expecting it to be tricky, but already that trend has been subverted in the first round. Yeah, and already a change up in the approach defensively for Fury when you kind of look at the operator picks. Now they're going a more defensive approach. The Vulcan canisters, the Azami Kiba barriers, for example, mute jammers, right? So a little bit more on-site defense, obviously changing it up from Tea Room Karaoke to Exhibition and Office. But I do like this a little bit better, especially on Skyscraper. You very much can sit close to on-site, especially for Exhibition Office. Don't have to really roam too far away. Uh, the attackers already have so much of the, the building that they have to clear anyway. Make it difficult when you get to the on-site. Don't give them the opportunity to find those early kills. Uh, not necessarily early kills in the last round, but in that mid-round, when it was on the line, too easy for Reaps to find three kills because no one was really on-site. So, see how that changes up here, but a really good start for Die Wolves on a largely defender-sided map. And continuing on with those meta discussions, Fury leaning heavily into what is expected to be popular for this third stage. Frost now has the 1.5 in hand, so I9 bringing her for the second round, and Hajime as well, jumping onto Azami once again, reflecting the trend that we did see in APAC North, where it was a 100% ban rate through that first play day. So it has slipped through here for the first game of the evening for APAC South, and Fury will be looking to capitalize upon that. And she is such a strong operator. Those keeper barriers offer so much support to the defensive team and can really facilitate some more aggressive holds where you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Yeah, just looking at those stats, maybe backing things up a little bit. 54% was the defensive win rate for Skyscraper in Stage 2 of APAC South. So actually not even on the really the higher end. Uh, Cafe, for example, was slightly higher. Theme Park as well. But uh, it is still a map that can be tricky to navigate for the attacking team. So it really does come down to the prowess and, and the skill level. And I think Die Wars are good enough to be able to navigate here. And you saw that in that first round. They weren't rushing. They were just slowly pushing through. And I think that is the mantra of how you want to attack Skyscraper. You can't be rushing around. Even this entry into drums, that's super aggressive. Reaps takes a bit of damage from that Vulcan canister, but they get the position. Position is everything on Skyscraper. Reaps sneaks through, oh. but caught out. Hajime on his toes finds that pick. Also, I'm keen to see how much progress has been done by Darwells. They do have the Thatcher and Double Hard Breach combo, so despite Mav and Thermite being banned, they should still be able to get to work elsewhere, but I don't think that impact has been felt. Now, the Nook is in play. We expected that. Breach has been opened, so the progress not too bad there, nullifying the attacking bans on the board. And Darwells, despite being a man down, have okay positions, but it's still going to be a tricky conversion. Just 40 seconds left. This time it's Fury now. Let have that advantage, and that adds to the trickiness of it, especially without that entry play from Reaps that we saw in the opening round. Jackie Wu, a slight chance there. It goes begging. I think that might have been onto like Colas. Flash, it lands. He's full white for the moment inside of Terrace. It's Pika, though, elsewhere that finds the kill. That's a body, but that's a headshot onto Hajime. Direwolves suddenly on the entry now find themselves with an advantage, and Jackie Wu goes big. Got two in quick succession until BG Man takes control of stairs. Red time. Nitro Cell. Is it perfect? No. Falls short. ED able to stick the plant now. Pika watching. Knows exactly where BG Man is as well. They have the intel. They have the plant down. And they have the time as well. And it's AUD to close things out. Well played there from Dire Wolves. And really exploiting the weaknesses here of Exhibition. They were a man down, but they had the breach open. They had decent positions. And they were able to force something on towards site. I got a little bit worried. The plant took quite some time to get down, but I think Darwell's just wanted to consolidate that position, ensure that it wasn't left in a one versus one. That's exactly what they did. It paid dividends, and now it's a 2-0 lead. And it's not a good start for Fury being on the defense of Skyscraper as well. We know the guys and girls on the desk, of course, touched on this being a map that the Direwolves in some ways almost wanted if you had those extra bands you were able to navigate the map ban phase to this map on purpose and they're showing why at the moment on their attack and, and so far through the first two rounds reaps showing what an uh, astute pickup he could be this stage for the direwolves he may be the difference getting them to the major the fury oh 
I think at this point, you almost have to hope that it's not a matter of, you know, one step forward, two steps back for them guys, going almost back to stage one level. So it's early days, it's two rounds in. But we're not quite seeing that aggressive nature of Fury that we saw in stage two, where they almost just threw caution to the wind and had fun with it. So far, just not really looking like being on top in this match. Talk about being on top. Fury are setting up extensively up above with vertical holes down below. You can see in karaoke and the adjacent rooms. A lot of that floor now exposed down below that allows the defenders to play up above and means that Darwells can't get free entry in towards site. They'll be forced up above to compete against these angles and as you can see on the rappel, that's exactly what they want to do. A couple of different entry points they could go for over towards the top of the stairs here where the Montang is positioned. Could also try and force something with Geisha, but that's going to take more utility. So the Montang pick here from Darwells could help them in opening up this round. Yeah, we've seen the Montang uh, quite a bit on Skyscraper now, especially more so from the side of the Diables. We saw it back in Stage 2, and it does have its effectiveness. The only issue being sometimes it almost feels like a 4 versus 5, though, if the Montang isn't necessarily sort of holding down a, a certain vicinity. So obviously when you look at these gas babes going out, it, it stalls out Jackie Wu. And just for a moment in time, it almost does kind of feel like 4 versus 5 until he's able to uh, push out again. So again, Dark, that's the final gas babe. So they are putting a lot of utility into denying Jackie Wu from getting into these positions early enough that he can then have an impact. 90 seconds left in the round, and Jackie Wu's still on the balcony. Smoke's though now gone. Dark has none left. No other trap operators to speak of as well, so he should have pretty free reign up above now to pressure those defenders. Reaps now rotates. He can pincer it from the east alongside Souffle. This is where the pressure begins to mount. This is where we've seen Diables really step it up in the first two rounds and Fury capitulate. 60 seconds left and it's Reeves that finds the opening kill. Spray through the wall, not going to be successful from ED. And Reeves utilizing Jackie Wu on that Montane to perfection so far as they clear above in T-Room Karaoke. But Hajime, he found the kill onto the Montane and now Reeves is down too. A little fight back here from Fury. And he did get at least the trade onto Hajime, but Two for one. Here we have the advantage from that little exchange. Now three versus three. With 35 seconds left to go. It's a big win there from ED. Up close. Yeah, BG needed to take someone with him to the grave there. He was always going to die in that position sooner rather than later, but unfortunately couldn't find a pick. Good aggression from ED throughout this round. And again, Fury in the last 30 seconds of these defensive efforts are struggling. No utility remaining either. No Nitrous Alpha I-9. Now pushing in through Pantry, 12 seconds left on the clock. It's Pika that finds that kill onto said I-9. And now like Cole is all alone, at least a kill from Bar. It's something, but will it be enough? Edie got taken down actually, and suddenly no time. It was enough. Fury win the round, a bit of a capitulation in the end from the Direwolves. Not sure how they messed that one up from a 3-1 scenario. Edie got taken down, and therefore Plant could not go down in time. Yeah, devastating round there for the Dire Wolves. Should have been a 3-0 start on the initial rotation, but the execution on site late there just floundered a little bit. Fury able to get it down, and with only a couple seconds remaining, we're able to win it as a result. So well done. Not the most convincing of rounds, it's fair to say, you but it's at it. least something. Yeah, you take it for sure. Fury needed one of those rounds, the first three, to go their way, and it's something they can now try and build upon. It goes a long way. Uh, you build off that, you can at least sort of breathe a sigh of relief. It's such a difference, 3-0 versus, say, 2-1. You just need a little bit of fortune, a little bit of luck, especially in these best of ones. Really go the distance here. On the defense, they would have been staring down the barrel of defeat had they allowed the Die Wolves to go up 3-0 on the attack of Skyscraper. So, uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of a messy round win, but it's a round win nonetheless for Fury. Now it's about how can they capitalize? How can they move forward? Five seconds in left really collecting a couple more rounds. I'm probably sensing they need at least three. Attackers in my eyes here in the first half, if they're really to make something of this defense on Skyscraper. But so far, it does feel like a team effort at the very least from Fury. Not just one player finding all of the kills. You can actually see everyone has two kills except for Dark. So at least it's an even spread performance from the roster of Fury. Almost the same can be said for Direwolves as well. Bomb 
Investigated by attackers. Reload. Reaps again, looking for something early on in this round, and he's been an annoyance for Fury thus far in this game. Finally, top fragging for Dial Wills, obviously not by much though. It's facilitating his roll nicely. Here's the Nook though, once more in play, ED this time. We've seen that roll juggled around a little bit. So, massive, the Nook to have an impact. Massive change up though in the operators here for T Room Karaoke compared to the opening round, right? Like a complete change up. The castle, the pulse all coming in as well as. Um, uh, I know they had the Jaeger as well. So, yeah, mainly just the pulse and the, and the castle, but I like it. It's a little bit more defensive orientated rather than a bit of that offensive, say, like the Vigil, uh, even the Valk, for example, as well. So, uh, this actually might pay dividends here for Fury in this fourth round. They did get that kill onto Reeps, who really, despite that opening round 3k multi kill, has been shut down a little bit in the next couple of rounds. So, Fury getting on top of the entry player, and they're starting to get these opening kills to go their way. BG Man doubles up, and suddenly. They found a little bit of their mojo. Flip of a coin, 2v5. Where was this Fury in the first two rounds? Perhaps just taking a little while to wake up in this one. Jackie Wheel and Pika will look to do some damage. No hurt in trying, of course. But Pika's low. Lit up from behind, I believe. And with a minute to go, it's just a case now of Fury closing out this round. Evening out the scoreline and turning around what was a very slow start in this match. As Pika goes down, he'll get spotted out by the heartbeat sensor of I-9. And any chance of them bringing this back is very, very low. Yeah, I mean, virtually impossible. Two versus four. Yeah, like Hollis is a little bit low on health, but time is also a factor. And there goes Pika. In fact, why not just make it flawless and deservedly so for Fury. Very clean round from the get-go. And while obviously round three was very messy, round four is as clean as we have seen in this match thus far. 2-2, two, two, the scoreline on Skyscraper for this best of one. Fury fighting back, two rounds to go in the half. That'll give them a surge of confidence. And that's where Fury looked their best in that second stage when they had a little bit of confidence. They were allowed to play with a little less pressure. They looked a lot better. Tactical timeout does come through in response from the Dire Wolves. And before we went to the cams, I believe I saw a bedroom selected there by Fury. Of course, we'll get confirmation of that in 20 seconds as to whether or not that will be locked in. Certainly an intriguing objective. I haven't seen too many teams play it with much success, but it could catch the Diables off guard and an opportunity for both teams really to just take a bit of a breath. And I think, honestly, Diables taking the tactical here is the correct call. Um, the last two rounds, not very well played at all by the Darbles. Honestly, probably should be at least 3-1. They had that very tight round previously. So if they can look to tidy it up themselves a little bit for the final two rounds, extend out a lead 4-2, they can sort of negate any of those round losses. Yeah, I don't necessarily disagree. I think there is an element to maybe keeping it for the second half. It is 2-2. The worst thing that can happen from here is Fury go at 4-2 and a half. And is that really so disastrous on a skyscraper defense? Probably not. So... Don't dislike it. Clearly, there's something that they obviously want to sort of talk about to close out this half. And I guess maybe when you look at it more so rather than being conservative, it's a matter of, hey, there's two rounds to go. We can still end up in a winning position at the closure of this first half. Let's not worry about the second half when we still got to finish off this first half. So, yeah, I, I kind of like it. And we'll see how the Die Wolves do respond here. Most teams typically, uh, it's always sort of off the chest, but I feel like whoever takes that tactical timeout usually performs pretty well after it uh, going into the next round. Doesn't always end up being the case, but more often than not, I feel like there is success to be found. So fifth round we go, 2-2 two -two scoreline and a game well and truly on our hands. Intrigued to see what the attack pattern from Divals will be this time for this exhibition objective. Last time they sent the double hard bridge and Thatcher combo out on the wall. This time Thatcher isn't in play, so I anticipate those walls to be a little bit more difficult to open up with the mute on the board. Of course, though, with four nades in hand, I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. No Kaid, of course, was banned out, so I don't mind that change up from Dire Wolves and will potentially allow them to have a bit more freedom elsewhere. Reaps with the pre plays down below, takes care of the default, and if he wants to, he can start getting to work with those grenades, start clearing a bit of utility, start taking some map control. The first time in this match, it really does kind of feel 
like a 50-50 kind of round. Direwolves really shot out of the gates. Reaps with that 3k multi-kill in the opening round. And obviously the second round went their way too. Fury then slowly started to respond. And obviously the fourth round, previous round, flawless. So now it's up to the Direwolves to respond themselves. Get the Salmas go out. A wall that is typically opened up with uh, Thermite. Obviously banned out. Usually you know, blows that massive hole. And it's another opening kill for Fury. A couple of rounds now in this half have gone the way of Fury to open things up. No trade either. I know, and getting on the board. Four and three. And it's Reaps again, Guz. You know, you don't want to sort of highlight him too much, but from that 4 1 start to now 4 5 has well and truly been nullified in these couple of rounds. And that was clean from Pika. Why not get a second one? Just walking into him like Hollis though, the third, but also the successful one in getting that kill. Three versus three, minute left. Zofia AR back on the menu. Leaves us in a three on three. Minute to go. Doubles need to show the initiative. That's exactly what Jackie Boo does. I-9 still down below. Reaps would have called out. That's exactly where he died on that first floor. So perhaps Doubles anticipating a player still be lurking down below. Hajime forced to aggress, droned out. I-9 though pops up. Still finds a kill. Heals the second to his right. He'll swing right, oh, but he doesn't get the kill. It's two quick ones from Doubles to close Man. out the round. Talk about a uh, quick flick of the rest here. Look at that, clean. Little jump up into the air as well. Back and forth round, though, within the round. It feels like maybe for the first time in this match. Direwolves, though, edge out. They take the round win, and now they have a chance to take the half well and truly. A 4-2 lead would be quite something on Skyscraper from an attacking half. Still think 3-3 wouldn't be necessarily bad for Fury. I'd, I'd probably almost put it par for the course here in this kind of match, and kind of just the way the meta really is now with attackers generally being on top and yeah as i said before with what 54 percent defensive win rate on skyscraper in stage two yeah i think three three is fine so still an opportunity here for fury to to close out the half and, and back themselves in to attack themselves question being now for the die wolves to close out this half with the montang ed is sitting on that attacker re-pick and not jackie Wu. I was trading out the double hard breach instead for a bit more of an ability to apply map pressure. And I think the Montang last time had a limited impact. I'll be looking, I think, to extrapolate, or to extract rather a little bit more out of him this time. We'll have to wait and see. Again, quite an aggressive, well thought out setup here from Fury up above with the Ver, with the Kiba barriers as well from the Azami, even castle barricades as well. But quite a bit for Darwins to deal with, but they start things off simple. It's a map sweep from Exhibition. They'll drone ahead, and their next point of interest is going to be Drum. Up to the south, thrown to the north, and those castle barricades just going to slow things down a little bit. And remembering the last couple of rounds now, I think three of the last four opening kills gone the way of Fury. Haven't quite been able to capitalize. In fact, really of the five rounds that have played out in these first half guys, only two opening kills have gone on to translate to a round win. So does it mean everything? Do find that opening kill. It's how you respond after that. Little opportunity here for BG man, and he takes it. Another opening kill. But this one's traded by Reaps elsewhere, getting the kill on to Hajime. Minute 40 left, Gas Babe is going out to just try and deny Reaps from pushing in from Shrine. Eight seconds left in the round. ED still lacking presence inside of the map as BG man allowed to get that pick. Reaps struggling in the last few rounds. Four versus three now. Fury desperately seeking an even completion to this half. And Darwell's that. They're struggling. They are really struggling to get control now inside of Geistra. I think the hard breach on the wall has been screwed up as well. Rotations now are coming through, and overall, it's looking quite messy from the attack. 60 seconds left. ED taking a bit of damage. That's from the gas babe thrown out by Dark. That was the final one he had, and it got ED very low. Nade from Souffle. I don't think that really got a whole lot. 
Suddenly, Dire Wolves have come to a bit of a standstill and may be forced to just rush on site late round. If that is the case, it should just play into the hands of Fury. I think Lycola is actually moving a Mute Shammer as well, having the audacity to do that with 40 seconds left in the round. Dire Wolves feeling the pressure. Pika could be the danger man. Over towards delivery. Now through Pantry. He's getting shot at, but he doesn't turn. Sees the traces. Had an opportunity to turn around. Nonetheless, unable to capitalize. Now ED in the 1v2. Yeah, and obviously Fury knowing that they had the numbers there to trade out late round. Played the vision well as well from below. The Vert game was not a factor for them. So an even half on Skyscraper. 3-3. Three, three. I think both teams may feel... Uh, I don't want to say happy with that. Probably content is the word. I, I think both teams should be content with a 3-3 half. Diewolves will feel they had a chance to go up 4-2 and really nail home a lead early on. But they'll back themselves in now on the defense. Skyscraper. Defenders, protect your bombs from every round, every down. match mattering so much here in APAC South. These teams only playing six best of ones to decide whether they go to the major. Every game, so important. No saving strats, guys. Definitely not. There is no saving strats. There's not enough games to be saving strats. And I think both teams, well, especially Fury on their defensive setups, have definitely not held back. The one over towards uh, Kitchen was quite advanced. And reap benefits in that round just gone. But now the dynamic shifts. Drew now on to the attack. Multiple repicks coming through. The Bontang is going to see an appearance once more. And I'm very eager to see who starts to edge out now in this second half. I think Darvels will perhaps be a little bit disappointed with the first half. Maybe not feeling they got a full benefit out of using that tactical timeout. And Fury, who started off quite slow, were able to salvage something. So it does leave us in a little bit of a neutral territory at the moment. I-9 looking for an entry over towards Kitchen. Vertical play going to be critical once more in the second half. Duflay was the second highest rated player. Apex out for stage two, just three and five to start. Obviously a different roster with Reaps coming in. An entry roll, probably going to be soaking up a lot of kills as Iron Iron is now starting to rack up the kills himself, finding that one onto Jackie Wu. It's just kind of loitering. Yeah, slow start for Su Flight, who had a tremendous stage two. And another opening kill for Fury. That's kind of been the difference maker in this match so far. Fury have just had that capability time and time again to find these picks and they just don't stop walking on through the map they just find kill after kill three player advantage pika ed the last two remaining they got 90 seconds to defend keeper barriers and smoke faves now nah, it doesn't matter i9's got three make it four well no sorry that was pika i got confused there for a second but still pika now needs to get the entire ace guys to clutch this one there's two three to go possible but the Montang stands in his way rotates over towards the drum and that's all being relayed to the rest of the attacking lineup here for fury oh, oh. oh. it could be on it, it very well could be 34 seconds left he's close to this diffuser picks up headshot dark goes down it's a quad for pika but hajime plays spoil to an almost incredible solo clutch round from pika Thought the round was done. It was 1v5. Almost brought it back. And yet they get nothing from the round for that one, the Diables. It's Fury that find an opening attacking round in the second half. From so clean, though, to so messy very quickly for Fury. <laughs> Setting bullets a little bit there for Fury. You should never, ever be losing a 5v1 post in Siege. Never, ever. Especially with Montang on the board. Giving you free live information, but still. Try as they might, they couldn't convert the round until Hajime stepped up to the plate, who was honestly in quite an awkward position, but timed his run well. 
They'll be putting that to the backs of their minds now. There's no point dwelling on that. 4-3 now the scoreline. They've gotten around under their arm. And much like their counterparts in Divers, they'll be looking to kick things off and start mounting rounds themselves. And unfortunately for I-9, that uh, peak of 4K completely overriding I-9's 3K. When the match and the, the round was very much still up for grabs in the mid portion of that seventh round, I-9 getting the multi-kill. The lead from the front for Fury. If it wasn't for the peak of late round heroics, he would have been the star, show, uh, star player of that show. Nine and six now. 4-3 scoreline for Fury, and they get a bit closer to maybe causing a bit of a boil over to start APAC South Stage 3. And finally, an opening kill for the Dire Wolves, a much needed one at that. They get rid of the Soft Breach as well. Grenades critically too, which are sparse at the moment in the current meta. Grenades are like liquid gold. And you don't want to be letting those drop early. Like Hollis, interestingly enough, with the impact he impedes this round, I don't think we've seen too much of an impact of those, and we, we won't in this round is our attention over towards Sue Flay now. Forced back with pressure. Reaps, though, the cross. Top of the office stairs, forced back over towards Dragon now, and much like his teammate, will fall back the secondary setup that the Dolls can play into. And it's not often in this match that Fury have had to play from a man behind either. And I do like their approach and just slowing things down a little bit. Play for position, push through, clear these angles, clear these positions, see if they can maybe then get a pick along the way, edging closer towards site. But if they take too much time, it does then play into the hands of the Direwolves here on the defense, like Colas trying to push in the drums and is just going to be backed away by the gas bay. First of three for ED. Pinball's still in the back pocket. With drone vision, but what can you really do with it? Just push straight through. ED resists. But yeah, these smoke babes are gonna take a lot of time now to dissipate. Reaps as well. With the deployable shield. That's gonna be challenging to clear. BG has one Selma he could use, but that could be pushing things, and it's not looking great at the moment for the attack. Oh. Oh, oh he's just snuck in. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication there. I don't think Souffle was ready for it. Thinking perhaps that ED was still covering that position. There's that final gas, babe. There's the Montang edging closer towards tight. 30 seconds left in the round. Reeves, could that be a bullet hole? Remember Fury. Waiting to push on to site now. He's prepared for it. BG man goes down. There's the hard reach. Gone. Dark though, pushing straight into T. Gets one. Couldn't find the second that he desperately needed with so little time remaining. Like Hollis, oh. with so little health remaining, finding the kill onto Jackie Wu. He has to stick this diffuser, but he's got no one to cover for him. And the pistol will do it from Reaps. 4-4 four, four on Skyscraper. A really messy round there to conclude. Very arguably probably shouldn't have gotten as close as they did to getting an entry, to getting a diffuser down. If the ace hadn't have fallen, perhaps it could have been a different story, but Diables did a great job in burning that time. ED in particular on the smoke, wasted a lot of time over towards drum. Now there was that miscommunication. They allowed the twitch of I-9 to sneak through. And if he perhaps found a 2K, if he found Reeks behind the shield and then the player on the balcony, that could have turned the tide. Yeah but he didn't quite identify that first target and only got the second, so it wasn't quite meant to be. But it does keep things exciting now. 4-4, the scoreline, and I know it's... I can say it's only eight rounds in. I feel like we've been here for a while now. It does start feel, to feel like overtime would probably be worth it in this, would probably be deserved of this match, right? It's been very close. Yeah. How many times, though, have we seen on a personal level, guys, these kind of matches where they're so close, they get to 4-4, four, four, then one team... Well, Fury. Fury is the perfect yeah. example. Think of the amount of games that they could have pushed to overtime in the past that could have basically got them into a major position, and they just couldn't, couldn't quite do it, right? They'd always win five rounds, they'd lose the match, <laughs> and we'd be crying for them. Yeah. 7-5 yeah. curse was very much a reality for Fury for a long, long time. Strike back here again. 4-4. Four, four. What a way to open up Apex, our stage three, as always. 
one of the most entertaining leagues of Siege that you will find. i getting turned in. The Blitz, 10 kills now. Leading from the front for Fury. Pika with nine, of course, that quad being a, a big factor for it. Reap's now starting to find a bit more of a footing as well here in the second half after a really good start. A bit of a slowdown. Bavaria out from Pika. Where things maybe might just stall out for a little bit of time. And it's the Finker of Hasher, mate. No LMG though, Gus. No. LMG well and truly in the grave. Oh. So is Pika. Who needs the hands it? Of it, yeah. 4v5 now. And Fury applying pressure. The Blitz over towards Terrace being a little bit of a menace. Just waiting for their opportunity to burst on towards site. They forced the defenders back now and divers look weakened. Second adrenal surge did go out by Hajime. Has one more. Big shots from Dark. The shots were going back the other way and he might have just come off second best and has courtesy of Jackie Wu playing this office position perfectly. It's a very, very difficult position to hold. So much pressure once that wall is opened up. And the window behind! Oh, sit down like Colas! Trying to just peep through the window. Cops a bullet to the eye. But Hajime putting the spear to good use. No, shut down Jackie Wu. Big round win for the Dire Wolves. And it just feels like they're getting their confidence back. Oh, that was clean at the end. Yeah, really well played there by Jackie to hold back and, and resist that pressure. But I'm putting the onus there on Fury playing that round so poorly. They opened up the breach. They had good pressure over towards Terrace. And they proceeded to rotate the diffuser over towards the samurai window. That player couldn't vault in because the pressure from the breach wasn't sustainable. And they had everyone stacking the breach, still not being able to clear out that position. The util wasn't landing. I don't know if the perhaps, I guess they didn't have a nade available to try and clear out that position. Whatever the case was, they could not clear that desk position. They were forced to stack the breach. And that's just asking for trouble on that site. They made it as easy as they possibly could for Darwas to be able to close out that site. And on the topic of objectives, we go over towards Bedroom for the first time of, in this match. And we had it teased earlier, but it wasn't uh, committed to by Fury. This time it is by Darwolves. And it's a site we've seen dabbled in internationally. As I mentioned, I'm not a massive fan of it. And I don't think teams have quite unlocked the potential this site may have just yet. But I am ready for Darwolves to prove me wrong. I don't mind it though with the Oryx, the Valk. You've got a couple of Nitro cells, so you've got a bit of that verticality play as well. What? Here though, I'm gonna go and try and throw one of these belt cams outside the balcony. Is he just looking for a potential form here? Oh, he's getting super aggressive with this nitro salt. And he lands it from downtown. A bit of a Kobe and I9 shut down the leading fragger for Fury. Talk about an opening kill for the Direwolves, and that will just make this defense on bedroom bathroom so much easier. Pika. Gets the headshot onto Hajime. We may not even see the sight guns. And there was a drone at the drone hole there for Fury. Why has that not been communicated that there might be a spawn peak over there? There might be some aggression on the window. They heard it get double tapped. So that was a misplay. 4v1 now already in the round, so it's over. Fury are going to forfeit match point just like that off the back of two incredibly bad misplays and two incredibly well played defensive efforts there from Dire Wolves. It has just absolutely flipped on its head. And we cursed it a little bit. We said, right, Fury have been in these positions <laughs> where they look like they can push an OT. They look like they can potentially push for a win and it just crumbles. Yeah. Hey, don't blame us. That's not our fault. That's, it's unfortunately hey, the curse I of Fury. Us. I, was, I was blaming you. <laughs> well, match point now for the Dire Wolves. And yeah, how quickly things can change from a 4-4 score line, essentially back and forth. And then Dire Wolves just go bang and bang and technically they are looking like the much better team the team that does deserve all three points as we head back to tea room karaoke which has had a bit of a 50 50 kind of strike rate in this game attack defense one of the more 50 50 sights guns so a chance still for fury and they should still have their tactical timeout they don't use it it was direwolves that used theirs back oh no hang on they did use it sorry that's I'm pretty sure they used it. Diwolves used it in the first one. I know Diwolves used it, but did Fury use theirs? I don't, as far as I understand. Yeah, I don't think so. So, questionable. Whenever you do go into that match point territory to 
maybe not elect to bring that one up. Still, Direwolves have been the better team the last couple of rounds. They've won the last three rounds in a row now, guys, and rightfully so. And they're just playing that little bit better on the defense. Fury, some questionable uh, mistakes on the attack. And it almost feels like if they don't get the opening pick, they don't get the round. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse it. Backs against the wall now for Fury. We're eager to push OT. Losses this stage are incredibly crippling. Every single point matters. At bare minimum, you need to be pushing every single game to overtime. Absolute bare minimum. If you are seriously a contender for the top two, you might be able to get away with one or two regulation losses this stage, but any more. It's not going to pan out well for you. And this is a match. Ooh, which realistically, oh. they could have won. Dark keeps them alive, though, for a little bit longer. A good trade. Yeah, I mean, one for one there is not the end of the world. Technically, an opening kill for Diewalls, but traded back so and again, quickly. It's, it's the sledge taken down first. Nades, as we mentioned earlier, are mm. so incredibly important in this current meta. Sure, they got adjusted heading into this patch. They're not quite as strong in terms of the damage radius as they once were previously, but they are still just so important for so many aspects of the game, and they're in such short supply at the moment. If you are a grenade player, you must be alive when it's your time to be called upon to clear utility or to clear a player. Now Fury don't have any grenades left for the rest of the round. Yeah, and it goes even really sort of beyond that too, with the sledge being the soft breach option too, and being able to open up certain positions to then also clear that utility with those nades. So uh, it's a bit of a double whammy, and then obviously you're just losing a player in general. And now you're losing Iron 9 who had an exchange with Jackie Wu and came off second best. I tell you what, this second half from Jackie Wu has been so instrumental. 12 and 7 now from a rather quiet start in the first half. He's really made Fury look second tier. Uh, over towards Exhibition in the previous round, he looked amazing and now doing damage here. What is looking likely to be the final round. That said, Dark again. Dark is the one keeping Fury alive. He gets a second pick in the round. And he's doing good damage now. Control over towards the throne. And Darvel's quite literally backs it against the wall deep in towards the site. ED, the only one in really an aggressive position. Post that T door to the north with a shotgun in hand. And maybe Fury can just push the envelope a little bit further. 40 seconds remaining in the round, potentially in the match here. And a chance for Direwolves to collect the first points of Stage 3 and set the task of making the Major. Lycolas with a nice kill. Jackie Wu couldn't get the trade initially. Spray has gone a little bit of miss there. A little wild. But it's Fury at take the round. And now they can get to within that OT push. And it goes both ways now, Guz. For the Direwolves, you know, you mentioned sort of how many regulation losses you can have. Well, what about just OT in general? How many matches can you give up all three points? and make that top two spot. There's only six games. Die Wolves don't play next week. They don't play in play day two. They get the week off. So if they lose from here, whether it's OT loss or even an OT win, you're giving up points and then you got to kind of dwell on that and they come back in two weeks time and they play a game in Gladiators. That's a tough ask as well. So every match so important, every round so important and a chance to get all three points still for the Die Wolves for Fury, of course. They desperately need to send this one to overtime. Yeah, it really does feel like the pressure's already mounting, and it's, what, the first game of the first play day of the final stage? Um, but still, the stakes are already mounting. And full credit needs to go to Dark for that final round. If he doesn't find the two trades there before the execute, Fury had no chance there. Did a really good job to keep it in the three-on-three, -three, and then from there, Fury isolating th three separate 1v1s and winning every single one of them cleanly. So did a great job. And now Darwell's need to respond over towards Exhibition. Last time, Jackie Wu was incredible here. Over towards the southern side, near the breach, playing behind the desk. He got a lot of damage done. I don't think they can rely on that being as effective this time. I would anticipate Fury to do a better job in clearing it. Well, Xenox fun fact for the night, guys. The only regulation win that the Direwolves had in Stage 2 was against Fury, 7-5 victory. There is a chance to replicate that here. It was very much a bad omen for Direwolves in Stage 2. They could not find a way to close out games, that being their only regulation win. Uh, they had a couple of OT wins, but a lot of regulation losses and, and very much was a detriment for them in Stage 2 and why they missed out on the Berlin Major. 
and need to be capitalizing. They need to be getting all three points if they are to contest for a top two spot. And we all, of course, know about the Fury 7-5 curse. They don't want this to be another one. They need to send this to 6-6. Six, six. Control down below for Fury. I think I-9 is posturing for vertical grenade play. Maybe find an early pick in this one. There are drones up above in sight. You can see them through the outlines. I-9 just needs someone to jump on a cam, give him some information. And that really shift the balance here. I think he cooks one up. See where it lands. Thinks better of it. And rightly so, the player up above isn't going to take any damage from that. The Dahl was doing a good job to position themselves well and not allowing Fury to get a cheap early kill. Just under 90 seconds remaining in this final regulation round. Fury desperate to probably find that opening kill. X been something of a boon for them in this match. Die Wolves do get that lead. They do not relinquish it that easily. Still no engagement. Still no one initiating. And we're getting to that 60 second mark. Hajime pushing through hallway now. It's up to Fury to make something happen. And finally, just towards house stairs is where something will happen. Dark and Souffle, I think they're on the exact same HP. It's a draw. ED now for a potential flank. We'll see if Hajime plays his role well on the watch. Got him. And he does. ED goes in blind. Oh, thought he missed the cam for a second. That was almost a harder prospect. Dark, though, finds the kill onto Reaps. It's falling apart for the Direwolves. All three points not going in their back pocket if they do not close out this round from a three versus five position. It might just be on Pika once again. You spot him. You can't hit him, though. And Fury will avoid the 7-5 curse and send this one to overtime. What a turnaround. And what a, a bit of a, a mishap for the Direwolves to once again struggle in closing out games, guys. It was their detriment in stage two, and it has been brought back for them in stage three. I have to joke a little bit in our, in our chat. I, uh, before this game started, I was like, I was calling you all out and saying, you're silly for not peaking Fury. They're going to win this game, no doubt. But then when Darwin's got match point, I was like, okay, I retract that. I take it back. Maybe I was a little bit silly. And now I'm going to retract my retractment because this game has just taken another spin, right? Neither team seems to have the confidence and the ability and the composure yeah. to close out critical rounds. Uh, we're seeing some weird flanks there from Darwin's. Obviously, they are feeling the pressure and they need to make plays, but it just wasn't the percentage play there. The, the play from ED, for example, that just completely opened up the round. They didn't seem to have the same confidence to anchor positions like they did last time. Uh, and Fury were able to exploit that change of pace that the Divals delivered. We head into OT now, and Divals have the defense. Now, in years gone by, we'd be saying, oh, well, okay, Divals, this should be, you know, their home territory. But the way this has panned out and the way the meta is at the moment, mm, it's anyone's bet. Yeah, certainly. Uh, I... That's why I said at the half time break it was 3 3, and I thought that that meant both teams should be content with that. And in the end, you know, you kind of look at the way that the second half transpired, and I think that very much confirmed it. Now, though, no one gets the three points, but who gets the two points? And this is, though, something that at the very least for the Die Wolves guys, they did quite a good job of in stage two was that even though they couldn't capitalize and win out in regulation. Of the four wins they had, three of them were in overtime. So I'm almost expecting the Die Wolves to, to now close out. It's just something that keeps plaguing them, though. They can't get the regulation wins oh. as uh, Dark's on a treadmill. That's not ideal there for Fury, and he's gone. That doesn't help. And it does add further to what I'm saying here, that the Die Wolves, though, generally do well in OT. Oh, no excuses for them in this round. The early advantage. Three left to lick their wounds. Obviously, don't want to speak on behalf of the admining team, but best of my knowledge, this won't be a rehost. It was too late into the round. Get confirmation of that later, though. And confirmation there is. We are playing it out, so Fury will need to try and recover the 4v5. Not an ideal circumstance, but there have been a lot of rounds where the team that lost the early advantage was able to crawl it back. So they need to set that aside and 
make do with what they've got. Well, uh, this is where the best teams just have the mentality as if it had have been a spawn kill. There we go. And, and, and just like that, now it's four versus four. So you can't get too wound up in that. You can't just be sitting there in comms and beating yourself up, right? So you just have to keep playing it, treat it like it's a spawn kill and play the rest of the round out. And yeah, go and get that kill. Now it's four versus four. Now there's no excuses for Fury either in winning this round. And you said no excuses for Direwolves. Well, to play through delivery, finally delivers. He's had a quiet game, was four and nine until that kill. And now it falls apart for Fury. They actually did better when they were four versus five down. PG Ooh. man though, that's a nice little double kill, but was not anticipating ED to be there for the trade. Once again, match point for the Direwolves. And as I've said back in stage two, this is where really it is their bread and butter. Closing it out in OT is what they do. They didn't have a single OT loss in stage two. Good round overall there from the Direwolves, able to hold out there. Got a little bit sketchy, they lost the true opening engagement and brought it to a, a 4v4, but then able to close out the Execute. Not particularly strong there from Fury. One of the more interesting things to probably note in that round was actually Fury themselves, the Nook with impact EMPs as opposed to grenades. And probably the only site I think on this map where it would sort of make sense. Because you obviously can't get vertical pressure on first floor site, so can't grenade from below and instead use them to instead get quick control up above. That's what they did, but then the conversion yeah. towards site. Not ideal. Okay, but but let's just bring it back here to the elephant in the room, and it's the Dire Wolves mentality when they are in a winning position, guys. What is going on? Because they've had the break now from stage two to stage three, and once again, they are in a position to close out, get three points, and they just can't capitalize. Uh, there's many out there that'll probably use uh, the C word, the choke. Uh, Whoa, the C, the C word. Yeah, the, the choking dialogues. Oh, I was... Sorry, I was just thinking of something else. <laughs> um, which obviously was kind of the main reason why they were not able to make the major. Not the only reason, but a pretty big one. Uh, you know, had four wins. Three of them, though, in OT. Continuation, uh, continuation of not being able to win out and get three points did cost them in the end. Uh, we saw it. Stage, uh, stage three now, play day one. It's happened again. Do you really read much into it? Or is it just a coincidence? Mm. It's such a small sample size, but I think it does feed into that bigger story. Um, personally, heading into this stage, I was not expecting Diables to be significantly better than last stage, to be completely honest. You've got a new player on the team, probably going to be shifting roles around a little bit as well with Reap's entry fragging as opposed to Harambe, who was playing a much more supportive role. So. In fact, I honestly thought Divers were going to recede a little bit, actually take a step back for at least the first couple of play days and then potentially improve and maybe be a late shout for the, the top two in a major spot. At the moment, I, I don't think it's quite that grim for them, and I'm probably that's just probably me being a bit of a negative Nancy. I think they've shown that they're at least minimum on par with what they were last stage, and there's a lot more room, I think, for them to grow at the moment. Reaps has clearly had a, a relatively impressive debut here. I think he's done an all right yeah. job. And going forward, if they can just tidy up, their regulation and actually get matches closed out, then I'll be in a good spot. Two points here, though, I'd be taking it. It's uh, a very competitive league, and every point is critical. Definitely can't disagree with you, but while two points here, you'll take it. They had the chance for the three points, and honestly, if you were to make the major, Apex out, you need to be getting three points. And we'll see if that could be a difference maker later on in the stage. But now, it's only play day one. You'll take the two points. There's a lot of water to still go under the bridge of Apex out. A lot of games to be played out. And a chance still, of course, many chances, in fact, for the Die Wolves to maybe gain some points elsewhere where we wouldn't expect them to do so. Still, overtime match point. Technically, this match is not even over, right? With Darth back into the game, five versus five, Fury on the defense. There's every chance in the world that this goes to a 15th round. Uh, absolutely every chance. My prediction's banking on it, so fingers crossed for me at least. Minute 30, this round flying by. But what really have the Darwolves achieved so far? They have some control over towards the west. And Pika in a position on the propel to pinch. Hard Breach now comes through, but the smoke's in retaliation from Dark. That one probably a little bit preemptive. I don't think Ace would have gotten control that quickly, but Pika does get a quick pick elsewhere. That's a big kill. BG man, last time we played this site in the defense for Fury, I think it was in Geisha, he actually ended up getting like two, three kills. So to get rid of him early 
allows not only the entry, but you're shutting down a player that played that position very, very well last time out. Not only that, the time starting to become a factor too. 55 seconds left, and now drums control, at least for the Dire Wolves, starting to really make headway and getting position above. Diffuse is in the hands of ED Day over towards Geisha, so we need to see a route in which he can get in towards site, preferably karaoke here, and actually get that stuck down. It's going to be tough. Attack it's a real top. challenging run to make it across there. He's actually rotating out over towards Drum, so maybe oh. T will be the play. The Vert there, I think, shut down. No, that was Jackie Root elsewhere. And with the five versus three, Dolls have a good read on these remaining two defenders that are still up. Reaps, though, takes out that Goo Mine. Pika takes out Hajime. Fury have just not even really been able to fire a shot. The Vert has backfired. Saw a couple of kills from above there for the Diwals looking down below, and they really weren't able to do much while defending Tyrion Karaoke either. I mean, that's a strange drop down from Jackie Wu. Thought maybe that the player below was flashed out, like Colas last one alive. Could still play for time. time. Then there is oh. not a lot of time, but Reaps was up close anyway to salvage it. Diwals salvage the map. They get the two points after giving away the three points in regulation. They at least close out in OT. Signs, though, that stage two may be replicated in Stage 3 for the Dire Wolves. A good debut for Reaps and overall a solid performance for the Dire Wolves. As we've mentioned a couple times, probably disappointed that they didn't get it done in regulation, but points, any points, are, are great points here in such a competitive league. And as for Fury, a slight disappointment